Welcome back! In the previous movie, we saw in our experiment that the area in which objects are sharp can be bigger or smaller. The bigger the aperture or the hole in our lens, the smaller the depth of focus. And the smaller the aperture, the bigger the area of focus. But that's confusing. But we are lucky. Remember the aperture numbers you have set in our last movie? Small numbers result in small depth, and large numbers result in large depth. Isn't the world easy? That's all you need to remember. By the way, aperture number sounds pretty stupid. Photographers call that f-stop. Now I'm going to show you a few situations where you can apply your new knowledge. First example, landscape photography. You have a palm tree in front of your image and the sea in the back. You want foreground and background to be perfectly sharp. Do you need a small or a big depth of field? A big one, correct. And with it, a big f-stop. Remember, big depth of focus, big f-stop. Generally, you would go for something around f11. It doesn't have to be too extreme. And that brings us to the second example. Architecture photography. You are shooting up on a building. You want the windows in front to be sharp. And of course, you want the top of the building to be sharp too. Remember our experiment from the last movie. What would you choose? Correct. A big f-stop. Again, f11 is a very good setting for a wide-angle shot like this. And here is our third example, and that's a little difficult. Macro photography. You get very close to a flower. Trying to capture the flower, you find out that the closer you get to an object, the more shallow the depth will get. And while the pollen are well focused, the petals are hardly recognizable. What are you going to do? The truth is, that depends. How do you want the image to look like? Some prefer a very shallow depth. They do what? They choose a small f-stop and get this image. Others like to have as much in focus as possible. And what will they do? They choose a big f-stop and they get this image. So it depends a little on what look you prefer. That's a good opportunity to recap by repeatedly looking at these two images. Small f-stop, small area of focus. Big f-stop, big area of focus. And once again, small area of focus, small f-stop, big area of focus, big f-stop. So easy. Repetition helps you to understand, which is quite natural. Make sure you watch the one or the other movie twice. Repeating content is key to remembering and understanding. And the other key is practice. So go out and shoot a few landscapes, houses, flowers, whatever. It doesn't have to be a beach or skyscrapers in New York. A tree is just as good. Practice a bit outdoor or even indoor and compare different f-stops for the same scene. But try to stay in bright, well-lit areas for the moment. Next up is our last specific use for aperture. It's portrait photography. So stay tuned.